about a little topping for your ice cream? It's not fake. You don't know what you're talking about. Yuck! Even I think that's disgusting. Hey, this video was lost for like a year and copyright claimed, but now it's back. More info below. Working on a big video. Sponsored by Surfshark VPN. <laughs> Neuter your Scooby, here comes the Woody. Does anyone remember Woody Woodpecker? According to legend in a Wikipedia article, Woody was created after cartoonist Walter Lance was on his honeymoon in the woods. While he was, I'm assuming, trying to plow his wife, he was so annoyed by a woodpecker drilling holes in his cabin during the rain that he decided to turn that into a cartoon. <laughs> Voiced by Mel Blanc before he did Bugs Bunny and known for being a cheeky cunt, Woody's first appearance was in someone else's cartoon, Andy Panda. But these pandas were so fucking ugly that people gravitated towards the bird. Woody was a popular character in the 40s, but today has mostly been forgotten. He's not remembered as well as other classic characters kids still admire like Mickey Mouse or Karl Marx. All Woody has are some cameos around Universal theme parks, a cartoon in the 90s, and some David Lynch videos after David rescued several Woodies from a gas station. First of all, I'd like to introduce my boys. This is uh, Chucko, and this is Buster, and this is Pete. I'm David Lynch, and this is Bob, and this is Dan. After decades of silence, a movie was announced in 2011 to be made by Illumination, but that never happened. Instead, we got this live-action movie by Universal 1440 Entertainment, the straight-to-video division of Universal known for Scorpion King 3, Kindergarten Cop 2, and Bigger, Fatter Liar. What? Universal Pictures presents... We are here now with Larry Wolf, about to release highly anticipated game, Big Fat Liar. That jerk stole my game! An all-new movie. It's the same movie. It's the same movie, just with a stolen video game idea. All the jokes are the same. Who asked for this? Give up yet? Universal felt it was time for a Woody Woodpecker movie and dumped it onto Netflix for another quality exclusive. But over in Brazil is where this film made it to theaters. While America doesn't care for Woody, his cartoons got much more airtime in South America. He's so much bigger over there that Brazilian animators came together to reanimate an entire Woody Woodpecker short, each in their own style. Oh, Deus, Deus. Oh, 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 so thanks to Brazil, we got this movie. I really love the movie poster. The dad looks like someone keyed his car, the mom is thirsty for the bird, and the son is the same height as his parents when he's really much shorter in the film. But let's find out why Woody Woodpecker 2018 is the 13th worst partially animated movie ever in no particular order. It's juice and jam time. The musical fruit. The more you eat, the more you. So, what's the problem with this movie? Imagine every single issue you have with Hollywood adapting a cartoon, it's all there. Wacky talking animal making fart noises, trying to be trendy mixed into a busy dad story. You know, a business dad who doesn't spend enough time with his kid, so the dad, his girlfriend, and the kid go roughing it in the woods. We've seen this so many times, when is someone gonna innovate the talking CG animal movie? I guess after Scooby-Doo 2 Monsters Unleash, you've hit the evolutionary peak. That had a song by Puffy Yumi and so commentary on mainstream media. You can't top that. I think Coolsville sucks. Woody Woodpecker's plot follows his family going camping so they can bond, but the kid doesn't like his dad's new girlfriend, who her actor is 17 years younger than the dad. I know you don't want me here. The only kid you want in your life is your girlfriend. That's a pretty weird way to phrase it, kid. This ain't exactly lost in translation. That lady is still in her 30s. Maybe the scriptwriter intended for a much younger woman to be casted. While on this trip, the dad has ulterior motives as he wants to build a big stupid house in the woods that the park ranger is against, but he legally owns the land, so what you gonna do about it, huh? Now, what's the house gonna look like? That's it? It's only a model. Shh. I know it's only a model, but at least color it, but who knows, I'm sure the real house will look much better. Seriously, that's how the house is gonna look? That's the house someone builds when dicking around in Google SketchUp. Wait a minute, they're not camping, they're moving in. No, 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 no. 
So how does Woody Woodpecker play into all this? Well, half the film is Woody terrorizing workers just doing their job, but Woody has to protect his home somehow, even if it means shitting on them twice. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I needed to see that. This movie has some shit eating, but no one is grinning. The good thing about a high fiber diet, it keeps you regular. Woody is absolutely annoying in this film, spouting every one-liner he can. It feels more akin to Bubsy the Bobcat than Woody. Like, how many one-liners does he have? Feeling lucky today, punk? Get off my lawn! Hey! Pee who? George Bush doesn't care about black people. True, Woody was always meant to be annoying, sort of like Bugs Bunny, except less smug and more gleeful. But I was rewatching some Woody shorts, and he barely ever talks, letting the action speak for itself. Whereas the movie adds in too much dialogue. <laughs> The film is shot in such a tacky way. Repeatedly, there's this snap zoom effect every shot Woody's on screen. There's cheap transition effects from Windows Movie Maker, and the actors seem to be struggling to perform with an object that isn't there. Go! Oh, it's so yeah. funny when they try to fly. You don't have Get wings, you dummy! Here. As this construction plot goes on, the other half of the film follows the kid Tommy, who decides to fuck off and listen to his favorite royalty-free song downloaded from freemusicarchive.org. It's here where his fidget bass jam session lures Woody over to make some noise. Woody sees he's got some peanut butter bonkers, and that apparently is his Scooby snack. <laughs> he loves the taste of it so much, Woody lets this kid pet him to some creepily sensual music I did not add in. It's okay. the mushy music fool ya. We're not friends or anything. I'm only doing this for the free food. Yeah, that's what I said in the gym showers at the San Francisco YMCA, but shouting no homo is not valid here, Woody. I'm going to call you Woody. Huh? You like that name? Woody? Wait, the kid named him Woody? He did not have a name before? He had a family at one point. Did his family not believe in names? Was the dad just named Dad? Maybe names work like a hierarchy. You know, you're referred to as Dad, and then you're promoted to Granddad when your son doesn't pull out. Woody gets named 20 minutes into the movie, but in the beginning, he writes his own name on a tree to form the title screen. I know it's for the audience to see, but you know, I thought he as a fourth wall breaking character would know his own name, if that makes any sense. Hashtag epic dad grill fail. After some more family drama, the kid walks to town unsupervised only to get bullied, which I have to say, the snappy dialogue here is among the only good parts of the movie. Seriously, doesn't your school have an anti-bullying policy? Sure does, that's exactly why we got kicked out. Right, John, high five. <clears throat> this ain't going so well, but Woody decides to stick up for Tommy by tearing off their clothes. Get ready to go commando. I'm a little concerned how far Woody was willing to go, but still, nice of Woody to help this kid out. Awesome! You went all MMA on him! Nobody messes with my BFF. And by that I mean bring her a free food. See ya! Woody, you piece of shit! All you care about is food! This kid means nothing to you! While in town, the kid enters a music store to try out their guitars. Tommy, no! Stairways are forbidden! You planning on buying it? Or just tuning it to death? Uh, sorry, I was just browsing. Browsing? Yeah. You know what the internet's for? Go to Amazon! He performs the forbidden riff, which summons the 12-year-old store employee who's dressed like it's 1993. She wants to form a rock band with him because... He just walked in here, I guess. Tommy and the girl do just that. Also, a third kid is there. He's not important. So they rock out to their rendition of the Woody Woodpecker theme song when guess who shows up? Hey, I know that song. That's my ringtone. That's the ringing in your ears. Clear some mucus out of there. Woody's here to party and Tommy introduces Woody to his friends, but they just ain't having it. I like how the girl's face just says, uh-huh, yeah. And that kid's just wondering if he should abandon ship or swallow his pride. Instead of questioning the talking bird, they just accept the reality they're presented and play surfing bird by the trashman. Yeah, this here is my jam. Oh, that bird's got mad skills. Oh, and you guessed it. 
This musical subplot builds up to a talent show, which doesn't contribute to the plot at all. Normally, a talent show in any other movie would have prize money that benefits them or some sort of character growth of them working together, but not here. This talent show is just played midway through the movie, it adds nothing, it's not part of the story, and benefits no one. We already saw Woody and the kids jam out once, we don't need to see it again. I think they tried to give it some significance because right before the competition, the third kid gets excited explosive diarrhea and can't perform, so Woody is more than willing to take over as drummer. It's not like a conflict where they have to convince Woody to help the kids out and they grow as characters. He was already up for it. If anything, all this scene exists for is to throw the third kid under the bus as the most useless character. He exists solely to make a conflict. Dude, I'm just trying not to blow chunks. But let's go back to Woody terrorizing the construction workers for one last prank. Look at that. That is the face of a man who would fuck my wife and call me a racial slur. <laughs> At this point, Woody targets the dad's girlfriend and decides to take things way too far by filling the RV full of gas. Wait for it! Wait for it! <sighs> I couldn't believe it, Woody actually killed a person. It's such a bold direction this cliche kids movie took. And now the dad has to decide if he still wants to build that house, knowing it'll only remind him of this event, while Woody realizes his actions have consequences. How does this even happen? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Oh. More Woody Woodpecker after these messages. I'll be right back on Fox Kids. <laughs> Are you tired of this happening, especially around the holidays? Well, you need Surfshark VPN. Yes, sir, the sponsor of tonight's video. What's a VPN? It's great. It changes your internet region and protects your privacy. You got Netflix? Just switch regions and bam, you can see what other countries have on their Netflix. It's that easy. How about something to keep you safe, especially on public Wi-Fi? Nothing can stop you. Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off with three extra months. Don't like that? You got a 30-day money-back guarantee. Oh, what, you got an incognito window on your browser? Wow, that's completely useless. Surfshark VPN, it's got clean web. This thing will block malicious ads, trackers, and malware. Don't trust an internet provider, trust Surfshark VPN. Use the code REBELTAXI to get 83% off with three extra months. You got a 30-day money-back guarantee, VPN. Nah, just kidding, that lady's fine, and she decides to dump the father, and we never see her again. The dad figures out if he wants this house built, he has to pay Woody and peanut butter bunker snacks. Woody is the type of guy who'd sell out his own mother just for his addiction. I know what you folks are thinking. Woody is a big, fat sellout. But the way I see it, it's a mutually beneficial business arrangement. The house is built, everyone becomes friends, and Woody decides to surprise them by carving a mural inside their near-finished home. That stupid bird goes into hiding in shame while the humans think this was intentional. The dad decides enough is enough and asks the park ranger if it's acceptable to go hunting for the bird. The woodpecker is a protected species. You'd be breaking the law. A $10,000 fine. Do you take credit cards? And two years in jail. All right. Okay, that too is among the only good lines in the film. Killing is out of the question, but capturing isn't. But Dad hires two guys who say they'll safely relocate Woody to another forest, but they secretly want to taxidermy and sell him to the highest bidder. The kids try to rescue Woody, but immediately get captured. Their last chance is to beg. Whatever 
whatever you're getting for Woody, my dad will pay double. I thought you said your dad was broke. <clears throat> Nice going, third kid. This plan was a waste, so the dad simply calls the police. Possibly the most basic solution to a movie, but hey, it works. Until the poachers run away, so it's up to Woody to go after them. Ah, cue the action chase music. <laughs> oh! Yeah, a quote, chase sequence. You know how in every other movie, a chase would be shot in a way where we know the relative distance from one another? This is to show if the characters are catching up or losing them, how close they are, who's in first place, you know, basic stuff. At no point during this chase sequence are the characters ever on screen at the same time. We can't tell how close or how far apart they are in this sequence. Woody just suddenly appears after the chase and drills through the bridge they're standing on. And for this week's lesson, gravity. <laughs> The poachers are arrested, the day is saved, but what happened to the house being built? Well, the dad is still gonna build a house in the forest, just not as big. I guess that's better for the environment, but it's alright. The dad also gave Woody a home of his own. Ironically, they chopped down 14 trees to make that. You guys are my family now, and I never even knew I needed one. Aw, he's giving you love taps. Ow, ow! Too much love, Woody! Woody, I got it! <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of the movie, but it's not quite over as after the credits they threw in an old woodpecker short from the 50s that's honestly funnier than the rest of the film. <laughs> This movie already felt like it was struggling to make it to the 90 minute mark, what with the pointless subplots, but now they recycle an old short as opposed to making a new one. These guys aren't just a bunch of goofballs. They know that there's plenty of suffering in the world, and they uh, spent many years with little iron hooks in their backs up on uh, Sunset Boulevard. What can you say about the Woody Woodpecker movie? It's just basic. There's nothing to recommend. You've seen this before. Just watch any other talking animal movie. It's bad. Good hell, folks. I hope you enjoyed our show. Join us again on our next program for a half hour of fun with your old pal, Woody Woodpecker. See you on our next show. Bye now.